Hello, crafters. Today we're delving into the art of decoupage, a fantastic way to breathe new life into ordinary items. Join me as we explore the basics of decoupage with fabric, napkins, and tissue paper. Hi, my name is Katie from Lady Red Crafting, and let's get started. We're going to start our craft out today with a recycled bottle. And this bottle was used for a balsamic and all I'm going to do is clean it really well and take off the labels. Next, I'm going to place this on a paintable surface and using my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, we're going to go ahead and do a nice coat of paint on all sides of this bottle. Now, while that's drying, I grabbed some fabric squares and I got three pieces of fabric squares that all kind of matched. And I'm only gonna cut out about a four by four inch square out of each one of these. This would be a great craft if you had some extra fabric lying around and you didn't know what to do with it. So I had some plastic packaging that I'm going to set these pieces of fabric down on. But if you don't have that, you can use parchment paper, wax paper, anything like that would work just fine. Now, once you have these laid out, I'm going to take my fabric Mod Podge and I'm going to lightly coat the whole entire square of these pieces of fabric. This is to allow the fabric to stiffen up just a little bit. But what is more important is that when we decide to cut these fabric squares into little squares, we do not have to worry about it fraying. So this will make nice, crisp lines on your cuts. So our next step is cutting out some squares and rectangles from these pieces of fabric. And I'm not going to cut each piece completely because I don't know if I'm gonna need to cut them in other sizes once I start doing the decoupaging. So I'm just gonna do about half of each one of these squares and we're just going to cut some random rectangles out. I wanted you guys at home to see how nice this cuts. So I'm gonna get a little close up here. You can see how well the lines are when you're cutting this fabric. It looks like you're cutting paper. Now that we have our fabric prepped, let's grab our bottle. And I'm taking some of my fabric Mod Podge and I'm just going to go ahead and brush a little bit on one side of this bottle. What I'm doing is just working in little batches on the bottle with the Mod Podge and the fabric. And I'm applying usually two, three squares of fabric. And then I'm going to start again with the Mod Podge. And I don't really have a rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this, but I am trying to match up my fabric squares to the other fabric squares so I don't see the paint on the bottle. And one thing I noticed when I was doing the front and the back side of the bottle, it was pretty easy to just take my fingers and wipe down the piece of fabric on top of the Mod Podge. But when I was getting on the seams and the sides of the bottle, I did have to take my Mod Podge brush and just lightly brush over the top of the piece of fabric as I was doing the next step. We're just going to keep repeating this step where we're adding the Mod Podge and then the fabric until we cover the entire sides of the bottle. I did not do the bottom piece of the bottle and I'm not going to do the neck of the bottle. Now I may get asked this question, so I'm just going to answer it now. But if you don't have fabric Mod Podge, I have done this with regular Mod Podge and it's worked just fine when I'm doing fabric onto a hard surface but I do find that the fabric Mod Podge does work better when you're doing fabric to fabric. Once you have all your fabric layers onto this bottle, I'm just taking the Mod Podge and I'm going to do a nice coat over the top to seal everything in. Once your bottle is completely dry, our next step will be finishing the round the neck of the bottle. And to do this, I'm going to use some gray twine and I'm going to go ahead and just bit around the neck of the bottle. And that's all there is to it. This adorable bottle is ready to display. Since we didn't do any paint or anything inside the bottle, you could use it with some water and you could put fresh flowers in there or you can just display it as it is or with some dry flowers. And if you like this project, hit that subscribe button below. 
This quick and easy craft is sure to delight. We're going to start out with a canvas makeup bag and I did get these on Amazon, so if you would like to learn more about them, I'll put a link in my description box below. But I'm just going to open this up and add a little piece of cardboard inside. Now I found these beautiful napkins on Amazon, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the back two layers of the napkin so that we can decoupage the top piece onto our canvas. And to remove the back two layers, I do use a little piece of painter's tape to assist. Next step I did not get on camera, but I did use my fabric Mod Podge and I went ahead and painted a nice coat of Mod Podge over the top of this canvas bag. Now you'll see me taking that napkin and just lightly pressing that down onto the canvas bag. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of cling wrap and I have a little roller here that I'm just going to roll everything down flat to make sure there are no wrinkles. And once we assure that the bag is completely dry, I'm going to take my scissors and just trim the excess napkin off of the canvas bag. Let's put our canvas bag on a paintable surface and using our fabric Mod Podge, we're going to seal the napkin onto the canvas bag. And while the Mod Podge is still wet, I found this adorable lace trim at the Dollar Tree and we're just going to attach that to the top of the canvas bag. For my final step, I'm gonna take that same fabric Mod Podge and we'll just use that to do a nice layer over the top of the lace trim to make sure everything stays into place. Once everything dries, we're going to go ahead and remove that piece of cardboard from inside that makeup case. And now we have this beautiful, customizable makeup case that you can give as a gift or use for yourself. And I like how this fabric Mod Podge works. It just is very flexible and it doesn't feel too stiff on the top of the bag. So I was walking around my local craft store the other day and I found this plain journal and I thought this would be a great fun project. So I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and we're just going to paint the front cover of this journal. Now while our paint is drying, we're going to prep our napkin. And to do this, we're just going to remove the back two layers of our paper napkin. Now for this decoupage project, we are going to use something non-traditional. I'm going to use some cling wrap instead of Mod Podge to attach our napkin to the journal. And to do this, we're just going to put a big piece of cling wrap over the top of the front cover of our journal. For our next layer, we'll layer a piece of the napkin over the top of that cling wrap. And don't worry about the excess, we'll take care of that later. Once you have everything in place, I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper down and then taking my hot iron, I'm going to go ahead and iron this napkin and cling wrap down. The hot iron melts this cling wrap down and it makes sure everything stays into place. So then once we are assured that everything is ironed down flat, we can go ahead and remove our parchment paper. And then I grab my zip sander and I'm just going to sand in a downward motion and remove any excess cling wrap and napkin. This is starting to look really nice. So I wanna make sure that the napkin doesn't get ruined while it's being on top of this journal. So I do wanna seal this in and I'm using some matte clear enamel by Rust-Oleum and I just take the journal outside and I just spray that lightly with the enamel. Now once the enamel is completely dried, I'm taking a glue stick and some ribbon that I had from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go ahead and add that to the front of our journal along the edge. And once I've added the ribbon, I cut the ribbon a little bit long so that I could fold about a quarter of an inch over onto the inside of the journal. And I'm just going to attach that with some hot glue to make sure everything stays in place. Now for another finishing touch, I'm going to take a cute little button 
And on the piece of elastic that is closing the journal, I'm going to stitch that button into place. I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you all about this fun playlist I'm a part of this month called Spring Decoupage Party. And this playlist has Craft Away with May, Rustic and Lace DIYs, Lovely Moments Creating, Kathy Jo DIYs, and LCR and more Laura's Craft Room. All of these ladies are linked in my description box below and the playlist. So please come check out this fun decoupage playlist so you can see all these creative ideas. Thank you so much for giving them all some love. Now, once you have your button attached, I just did a quick little knot and just went ahead and flipped that over. And this is what our final project looks like. I think this turns out so cute. It's a great little gift that you could give or you could use for yourself. So I'd love to hear from you. What has been your favorite project to decoupage? Please leave a comment below and let me know. For this next project, it's a very easy, fun gift project you can do, or you can have a party and you could just have a whole bunch of friends over and make these wine glasses. So we're starting out with some wine glasses and a napkin of your choice. And we're going to remove the back two layers of the napkin. And I'm going to use a little piece of painter's tape to help me remove that piece. Next, I'm just gonna cut my napkin into four quadrants and I'm only gonna use two of them. And since I plan on washing these wine glasses, I am going to use my dishwasher safe glossy Mod Podge. What we're going to do is we're going to flip our wine glasses over and then on the bottom piece of the wine glass, we're just going to paint a nice layer of the Mod Podge. And while the Mod Podge is still wet, I'm going to flip my napkin so that the top part of the napkin is facing down onto the Mod Podge and I'm gonna place that down on the wet Mod Podge. Now I grabbed a piece of cling wrap and I placed that over the top of the napkin to help remove any of those excess wrinkles. I'm just going to repeat all of those same steps on my other wine glass. Once these napkins have completely dried, I do wanna do a quick show and tell here where I can flip these wine glasses over and show you what it looks like. And you can tell that you can't see as much of the napkin through but that's no problem. We're going to grab our Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, or you could use the color white. And I'm just going to paint over the top of my napkin. Now, once our paint has completely dried, I'm going to take the same dishwasher safe Mod Podge and seal the top of that paint. So then I set these aside to dry for about an hour. And once everything was completely dry, grab my zip sander and I just sand in a downward motion and remove any excess napkin. Now let's flip these wine glasses over and see what they look like. Wow, I think these turned out so cute. And you could have a party where you could invite your friends and just have them all bring a different napkin and you could do different things with your wine glasses. So I wanted to say a quick thank you to all of my current subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button below. I really would appreciate it. Thank you. This is a great little craft if you want to do a quick gift for a friend or if you're just learning how to craft. We're going to start out with this cute magnet from the Dollar Tree. I place it on a paintable surface and using my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, we're going to give a nice coat of paint over the top of this magnet. And to cover this completely, I did need to do two coats of paint. For our next step, we're going to use this beautiful tissue paper that I got at the Dollar Tree and some hard surface Mod Podge. We're going to take a paintbrush and just paint that Mod Podge over the top of the magnet. And while the Mod Podge is still wet, I'm going to lay a piece of tissue paper over the top of the Mod Podge. And for our next layer, we'll use a piece of cling wrap over the top. And I'm using a little Mod Podge roller here to just roll out all of the wrinkles, but you can also smooth this with your hands as well. 
quick thank you to all those viewers out there. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button below. And once everything is dry, I go ahead and grab my Mod Podge again and would do a nice coat of Mod Podge over the top of the tissue paper. And once that is dry, I take my zip sander or sandy block would work great. And we just sand off the edges of this tissue paper. Now I'm going to take a wood skewer and I'm just going to poke the hole back through on the top of the magnet. Now let's add some embellishments. And using my hot glue, I'm going to add this quick bow to the top of my cutting board. Now I found these adorable buttons at Ben Franklin the other day. And I'm going to use the little spoon set and we're going to just take the little piece off the back side of the button and I'm just hot gluing that as an embellishment on our little magnet. And I did find a package of very similar buttons on Amazon so I'll put a link in my description box below in case you don't have a Ben Franklin by you. Now here is the finished magnet. This turns out so cute. It's a great little addition for your kitchen or it'd be a nice gift for a friend. Thank you for taking the time to watch today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you'd like to see more crafts, click on this next video. And as always, please remember, craft more, stress less.